Hi everyone, Frank Ian here. So today I'm going to show you how to make the element bromine. Now I'm going to be using a process very similar to one used by Niall Red. So I'll put a link to his video in the description. So before we get started, I must warn you that bromine is deadly and um, you, should re you really shouldn't attempt this unless you have a background in chemistry. The safety equipment you'll need is um, skin protection, lab coat, eye protection, and if you don't have a fume hood, a respirator. Bromine is very volatile and the vapors are every bit as deadly as chlorine. So let's get started. So bromine is found right here on the periodic table. It is element number 35 found in the halogens group. It is just barely a liquid at room temperature. It's extremely volatile, it's got a low boiling point, so it, boil, so it evaporates very fast to form a um, red-brown vapor. The liquid itself is a dark red, and since it's a halogen, it's extremely reactive, especially with metals. So here's the apparatus I'll be using to make the bromine. So here is where the actual bromine will be produced, however it will be um, it will be mixed with every, everything else I use to make it, like uh, sulfuric acid, um, uh, potassium permanganate, water, things like that. Since bromine's got a very low boiling point, it'll evaporate here, and it's got nowhere to go but this condenser tube here. This condenser tube will have cold water flowing through it, and it's got a separate tube within it that the bromine vapors will pass through. The bromine will condense to a liquid here, and it will fall into the collection flask here. The collection flask is immersed in ice water so that the bromine will stay liquid. Now, I am going to be heating a closed system, so that means I need to give the vapors somewhere to escape should it pressurize so that my system will explode. This hose leads to a beaker full of sodium bicarbonate solution. The sodium bicarbonate will convert the bromine back to sodium bromide. Thus it won't allow any toxic vapors to escape should the system start to pressurize. Alright, so here is how I'll be making the bromine. I'm going to use potassium permanganate as my oxidizer. So what's going to happen here is well, first off, I'll, be, I'll also be using sulfuric acid to convert the sodium bromide at equilibrium to hydrobromic acid. And from there, you can convert the hydrobromic acid using an oxidizer, potassium permanganate in this case, to elemental bromine. Now, some of the bromine will remain in solution as Br negative because it, the uh, manganese and the potassium still need counter ions. But I found trying to bubble chlorine through solution is a lot slower and harder to do um, with the equipment I have access to right now. So here's what you're going to need. 100 grams of sodium bromide. 20 grams of potassium permanganate. 60 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. And... 150 milliliters of distilled water. Now it's important that this is distilled water so that there is nothing else but water in here. If you've got any other dissolved salts in there, then it can affect the reaction. Now, I'm going to start by dissolving the sodium bromide in 150 milliliters of distilled water. So just pour that all in, stir it up a bit. Now, while the sodium bromide dissolves, let's add the 20 grams of potassium permanganate to the reaction flask. Now this is not going to dissolve. This is not going to all dissolve when you add the sodium bromide solution, since this goes past um, potassium permanganate sol solubility in room temperature water, but it will dissolve. Um, as you add sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid will um, will both increase the volume of the solution, add a little bit more water, 
but more importantly it will convert it to permanganic acid and permanganic acid dissolves in water very easily next let's take the concentrated sulfuric acid and add it to the addition funnel here now my addition funnel isn't quite big enough to hold 60 milliliters but that's okay I'll just finish adding this later alright so now that the sodium bromide solution now that the sodium bromide has all dissolved into solution and cleared up to look like this I can add it to the reaction flask There we go. Again, all, not all the potassium permanganate will dissolve until we add the sulfuric acid. So don't worry if they're solid in the, in the bottom. So, now that I've got the condenser tube connected and cold water flowing, flowing through it, I can start to add the sulfuric acid. Now, we're gonna, you're going to want to add the sulfuric acid at a slow and controlled rate so that you don't overheat the system and you don't lose too much bromine through the hose here. So, you slowly open your addition funnel. You can see it's already bubbling over here, expelling the excess gas. But more importantly, notice the uh, red-brown vapor in there that is bromine in gas phase now the reason the bromine's already boiling so much is that um, we're adding sulfuric concentrated sulfuric acid to water and when you add concentrated sulfuric acid to water a lot of heat is released so if you feel this reaction flask you notice it's become quite hot, more than hot enough to boil the bromine. And also, let's take this off the stand. Notice in this condenser tube, those, let me get this to focus, dark red droplets of liquid here. Now that is bromine in liquid phase, simply transitioning from gas to liquid since we're cooling it with the um, cold water in the condenser tube. Now here, if you look closely, you can see the bromine is dripping into the collection flask. Now, each 100 grams of sodium bromide you use will theoretically give you 15 and a half milliliters of bromine, but you'll never actually get that much because um, some of the bromine will remain in gas phase and some of it will remain um, dissolved in water. Bromine is soluble in water to an extent. So I estimate you get, you'll get about 10 to 12 uh, milliliters of bromine each time you do this. You may scale this up and down as you please. Oh, I don't know how well you can see this with the camera, but there's a bit of liquid bromine in the bottom of that collection flash. So there's a lot of vapor in there, so it's hard to see in there, but if I move this ice water a bit, you can definitely see the liquid in there. Alright, so I've just put my respirator on since I've disconnected the uh, condenser tube. Reaction's complete, though there's still quite a bit of bromine in the uh, reaction flask. And I can dispose of that by using copious amounts of water and sodium bicarbonate. This will neutralize it back to sodium bromide and make the solution non-hazardous. So anyways, now, let's pick the... Uh, Reaction flask. In the collection flask, I'm sorry. And there's our bromine in there. Now it's a little bit difficult to see, but there's a clear layer above the bromine. That's water. So our next step is to separate from the water. So, first off, 
we can add it to an addition funnel here. Secure that back to the uh, clamp. Now, to separate the burning from the water, I'm going to use concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very good at dehydrating just about anything. So, add sulfuric acid slowly. A lot of heating occurs when sulfuric and acid and water meet. Yeah. You see, even just a few drops added starts to boil stuff in there. So let's wait for that to stop bubbling so much. Now the next step, next step I mean, is to Tap this, invert it a few times quickly, and make sure when you invert it to open this each time you invert it. That way you can release any pressure building and the funnel won't burst. Now as you can see, the bromine and the water have formed two separate layers, so let me go get a test tube to collect the bromine in. So all I have to do now is just decant off the layer of bromine sitting under the water. And here it is. I've got roughly, uh, I'd estimate it at about 12 milliliters of bromine right here. So let's tap this off. I'll tell you how to how you should store it in a moment. Now, before I show you how to store it, if you want to get rid of the bromine vapor, here's how you do it. Here, I've got a spray bottle full of sodium bicarbonate solution. So I can spray an aerosol in this um, collection funnel here, this uh, separ separatory funnel, I'm sorry. And you notice the brown red color of bromine will slowly disappear. This is because on contact with water, the bromine will convert to hydrobromic acid. And once it contacts the sodium bicarbonate, it converts to carbon dioxide and sodium bromide. Very similar substance to table salt. This is also very handy if brewing vapor leaks from your system you can use this spray bottle to take care of that problem so as you can see the brewing vapor is now gone after a few squirts of uh, sodium bromide sodium uh, bicarbonate solution all right so I mixed that batch of bromine with the previous batch, and I've got them in one test tube here. Now what I like to do is, first, see, ideally you want to store bromine in a sealed glass ampule, but I don't have, I don't have the equipment to uh, actually melt the glass together and seal it. So I've capped this with the inert polymer here, um, and I've kind of suspended it with a separate plastic. This is just a, just a water bottle. Now this I put in the freezer, so that the bromine will freeze to a solid in here. And bromine can't react with anything except gases until it evaporates. Or liquefies. So, I mixed that batch of bromine with, with one of my previous batches. And I've got it all in a test tube here. 
Now, ideally, you want to store bromine in a sealed glass ampule. Um, I don't have the equipment to melt the glass together and seal it, so for temporary storage, what you can do is um, suspend the test tube with, within a uh, water bottle and put it in the freezer, and the bromine will freeze to a solid, and it can't react with anything until it melts back to a liquid. It can react with gases, but it can't really react with the um, nitrogen or the oxygen hanging around in our atmosphere. Uh, if you store bromine this way, make sure you check on it once every few days because you'll want to know if the test tube breaks. Alright, so here's my bromine. I've mixed it with the previous batch um, into one test tube here. Now, ideally, you want to uh, seal bromine in a glass ampule, like you want to melt the glass together and totally seal it. But I don't have the equipment to melt the glass to... Uh, seal the ampule at the moment so for temporary storage what I like to do is um, cap the test tube um, suspend it within a uh, water bottle and put it in the freezer now now bromine is a much much less nasty substance if you freeze it and it's got a freezing point higher than that of water so to react with anything in here bromine has to uh, melt into a liquid first so freezing bromine stabilizes it considerably, makes it a lot safer to store. But you'll still want to check on this every few days. So, once I've accumulated enough bromine to try some different reactions, I'll take a video of that too. I'll try reacting bromine with various substances like, um, let's see, sulfur, water... Um, aluminum, sodium, I'll think, I'm sure I'll think of some others as I keep working on making enough of this stuff. So, that's one method to make elemental bromine. Now once I accumulate enough of this to do some reactions, like mix it with aluminum, sulfur, and sodium, just to name a few, I'll make a video on the bromine element itself once I've got maybe 100 milliliters accumulated. Again, do not try this unless you've got a background in chemistry as bromine is very, very nasty stuff and could easily kill you. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.